Kevin asked several questions about an individual who uh, committed a couple of homicides in Delphi, Indiana, back in 2017. I'm not going to use his name. As you guys all know, I never use the name of the suspect because they don't deserve it. A young girl, Libby, 14, and Abby, 13, were murdered on a trail by this individual in uh, February of 2017. He was arrested in 2022 after more evidence had uh, linked him to the crime. The reason I bring this up is I've been asked a lot of questions about law enforcement tech tactics and different evidence collection. One of the things is, are officers allowed to lie to suspects? Yes. Uh, there's a fine line there when you start using deception in your in your uh, interrogations. Is there's a line you can't cross. You cannot cross the uh, any false promises, and you can't make any threats. And what that means is I can't look at somebody and say, well, if you confess to this, I'll talk to the prosecutor and we will uh, drop these other charges. <clears throat> or if you say, if you don't confess to this, uh, you're going to get life in prison. You, you just can't make any threats and you, you, uh, you can't follow through with. If, if a prosecutor says, I'm going to prosecute you and we're going to go for first degree murder, then that's not a threat. That's just a promise what they're going to do. And law enforcement cannot make those, those threats or promises. So, and the other one was, this is the one that I'm really going to cover today, is the firearm. They have, they, I've, I've heard people tell me, or people have told me that it's uh, junk science. And we're going to clear that up a little bit today. The thing with this homicide is it took five years and right now, they're all saying, there's a lot of people out there saying that this guy's innocent, he's an angel, he's, he's great, he's whatever he is. Now they're trying to say, well, he's mental, he has issues like that, and he, and he was coerced into confessing to this, this crime. He lived for five years in society without getting uh, any mental, mental health issues. But now he confessed to several uh, agencies, two different facilities, uh, prison officers, a psychologist, and they just released his, his uh, recording of talking to his wife. And she told him no because she's in denial. She, of course she doesn't want him to be guilty. Uh, but he's confessed over and over and over. And he, he has been told, no, you didn't do this by his wife. And he said, yeah, I did. He's pretty persistent with it. Now, if you're not guilty and you've lived for five years in society, just fine. And if I'm not guilty of something, I'm not going to confess to it. That's just all there is to it. Uh, so with that being said, I know I'm going to get hammered on that one. There'll be a lot of com or comments on it and that's okay. Uh, the lying portion of law enforcement, is it controversial? Yeah, it's very controversial, but there's, there's sometimes if you look at somebody and say, you know, well, your partner over here has already told us what exactly what happened. Is that lying? Yeah, it is. But then the suspect you're speaking to wants to jump on it and uh, protect their own their own hide and they'll throw their partner under the bus so when you look at these things it's they'll they'll eat each other they'll they will throw each other under the bus whatever you know thing you want to talk about they'll do they'll do it each other just to protect themselves uh, I've done it before on simple traffic stops I asked somebody you know where their medic where their marijuana was in the car and they look back at the car and say, I don't have any marijuana. Well, then I'll go up to the passenger, ask the passengers, you know, if they could hand me the marijuana because they're, the driver's already pointed it out to me. And they hand it to me. Is that lying? Yeah, the driver never told me they had marijuana in the car. I knew there was. You could smell it. You could, every other sense in there was was, uh, was going off saying, yeah, there's, there's illegal drugs in the car. <sighs> right, wrong, or indifferent, it's just what it is. It works sometimes, but again, you cannot make any threats. And no promises. Uh, so, police officers who cross that line, they they need to be prosecuted. You just don't cross that line. Um, okay, the junk science. Let's get this one covered. Firearm. Again, I'm in my room where I'm downstairs. I have a wall, outdoor wall here. So, if, they, if this round, if a round went off, this firearm is going to hit drywall, concrete, dirt. 
there's nothing over there. So pull the magazine out. Let's clear the gun itself. And okay, this firearm is cleared. Now let's explain something again on how a firearm works. If you look at this firearm, they're saying it's junk science because the round was never fired. They found a a a round on the uh, under some leaves by the crime scene. And this is a barrel and a chamber. This is the chamber. These things are machine made. They're assembly line, they're they're produced, mass produced, but I can guarantee you that not every single one inside is exact. There will be a, a micro scratch or a, something in there that's going to make this unique. So when the round gets put into the chamber, it doesn't go in the chamber gently like this. It gets slammed into the chamber. And I'm going to show you exactly how that works. And when it goes in and it gets slammed in there, there is going to be microscopic markings on this round that is going to be compared to this chamber. It's just going to happen it's like a fingerprint. There's, they're built the same. They're built on the same assembly lines, wherever you want, you know, whichever brand of firearm you're carrying, but each one is going to be unique. Something's going to be different in there. And we're talking microscopic uh, science. This isn't great, big, in your face. This is what it is. These are things caught through microscopes, but they will be found. Okay, so let's get this back together and show you exactly how this thing works. Okay, there is a round in here. All right. When this gun magazine gets fed into this firearm, that gets slammed, slamming that round into the chamber. When that round is slammed into the chamber, it will leave little microscopic markings on the round itself. So when they found that round, they compared it to the Sig, Sig Sauer firearm that individual had, and it matched. So it matched to the person, the gun. It's just, so that is not junk science. Uh, people like to call things that because they don't, they don't like the idea that you can get caught. I, I don't know why. Uh, we did the same thing with the North Idaho murders. Uh, people wanted him to be innocent. There's no way that one individual could kill four people in that short amount of time. And, and, and I pointed out in Japan, an individual killed over 30 people in 30 minutes with a knife in a hospital, and then left. He came back and turned himself in. It is capable of happening. This individual, everything is aimed against him. Everything. You know, his confessions, the evidence, everything. I don't know why people are, are so set on, on him being innocent when they have everything, all the evidence. And if he killed these two young ladies, he deserves to be in prison for the rest of his life. Uh, so, or even more so than just prison. But that's my take on it. I'm not, I haven't really gotten into this case that much. I've just been asked a few questions about the evidence and what law enforcement can and can't do. Uh, there's case law out there that says law enforcement can. Tell, tell lies during an interrogation, but they have put restrictions on it. And again, those restrictions are they can't offer any fake, you know, false promises and they cannot threaten. There's absolutely no physical uh, punishment. There are a few things when it comes into the interrogation. Part of it is it, it, it determines age, mental capacity, all this stuff. But again, he lived for five years in society. So I think somebody would have found that he had, did have other issues. Um, but that's what I'm going to say on this. And what we can do is talk about it. Uh, if anybody has any comments, if you like this page, subscribe, like it, share this, this uh, video. And let's get some conversation going. Um, I am not a lawyer. Again, I spent 10 years in the military and I spent 30 years as a police officer. So... I've got a little bit of experience when it comes to evidence and it comes to interrogations and investigations. Uh, but I'm also open. Uh, I'm not going to look at you and say the only way that 
things can be done is my way. So, but when it comes to evidence and it comes to things that's happening, then yeah, I will, I will, I will stick it with the, uh, with the evidence. So let's hope they get to the bottom of this. They already got confession after confession after confession. They've got evidence. Uh, let's see if we can get more on, on this and let's go from there. And uh, you guys stay safe, keep your head on a swivel and have a great day.